Hey everyone, it's Chrissy from Everyday Survival Gear, and today we are checking out the Fulham of Hero. The Fulham of Hero will be your hero when you need it the most. You can make a remix. Oh, when the Fulham of Hero comes along. Well, you aren't subscribed to me for my singing skills. You are subscribed to me for my fl fl flashlight? Flashlight, flashlight skills. That's the one we're looking for. Um, guess first of all, we'll talk about what it comes with. You get the clip. You do get a included battery, but I didn't get the battery because mine is secondhand from another uh, Aussie reviewer. I'll leave a link to his review below, but um, you can't send batteries in the post here. So you do get like a nice carry case if you want to uh, put it on your belt clip. You do get a USB cable for the battery. Instructions, and you also get a lanyard and O-rings, but um, I don't know where I put those because I am such a professional reviewer. And I've been doing this for so long that I lost them. But in my fairness, I have had the light now for a few months. So, eh, they're gone somewhere. I was going to talk about the body first. Because it is like quite a unique looking body. And it is cool. But I figured most people will like the uh, the actual specs first. So we'll talk about the specs. So it's using a Cree XHP 50.2 under um, TIR optics. As you can see here. Uh, the Cree is in a cold white 6000K tint. Um, and it outputs 2,300 lumens at 10,000 candela, according to uh, Fulamov. My readings are a little bit different. I'll overlay a video here so you can see the step down and stuff. But maximum, I got 2,523 lumens at the start. And it kind of equaled out at about, ooh, where did I write that down? 2,357. So 2,300 lumens is about right. But because it only weighs 55 grams, it does step down pretty fast. So keep that in mind. Um, it's not going to sustain it for too long and I only measured 6000 CD so a little bit less than what Fulham have got. One thing I want to mention about the output is my output is a little bit on the high side because I'm not using the included battery because it didn't come with it. Um, when I use just a standard size battery like uh, this because you really got to use a battery with a uh, tip here just a tip mind you um, but if you don't it doesn't make contact at the front because the way the front is set, set up so they do give you an included battery um, So I'm not sure if you'll make as many lumens as me But you can always just do what I've done and put a magnet on a flat cell But you will make around about 2,300 lumens With this cell I make a little bit under 2,000 lumens So it does kind of matter what kind of cell you're going to use So size wise the Fulham of Hero is pretty small not as small as the FW3A, but I'll show you that in a second. Uh, it only weighs 55 grams, so don't expect it to be like crazy with the output. It's not going to sustain 2000 lumens, there's no way possible. Unless it had like a fan, a little mini turbo size fan. Um, so yeah, what was I saying? It weighs 55 grams, and it is 107 mils in length, and 24.5 mils in diameter. So it is very small for an 18650 flashlight. Yeah, so size-wise, it is comparable to the FW3A. It's a little bit bigger. Uh, it is also a e-switch, where the driver sits in the back in the full of Hero, uh, whereas this is more of a conventional setup. Um, but the full of does weigh pretty much the same as a standard, not the brass one, as a standard FW3A, and only slightly bigger. So it is a pretty small flashlight. So the full of Hero is quite a intuitive light. Uh, it does come with a lot of functions. Um, I will pull apart the light. Actually, I might just put a photo here because not that many people really want to see the driver anyway. So I'll just show a photo of it. The components are very small. It does look like it just runs on some sort of FET um, system. It's not like a 6 volt Cree XHP 50.3. It should be a 3 volt there because when you do run different batteries, it does output different uh, brightnesses. So it's not a regulated output on turbo mode. But um, being an e-switch, it's got a lot of uh, functions, so it does have a reverse polarity protection. It does actually have overheating pr protection. Um, it does actually step down, not a time step down, it's a temperature step step down. So when I put that video in, in before, you saw it dim. It wasn't dimming by time, it was dimming by temperature, which is pretty cool. The driver has features like a lockout mode, so you don't accidentally active, activate the light. It's got five normal brightnesses plus a bunch of strobies, um, so it's got like a strobe mode, uh, SOS, beacon, and then strobe, 
uh, it's got a uh, instant turbo so the driver is actually pretty feature pa packed feature packed uh, it doesn't have a ramping mode which would be pretty cool if it had a ramping mode but it doesn't uh, one more thing to mention is the driver does have low voltage warning so it will warn you when the battery is at 10 percent so that's pretty good considering that it's an e-switch so there is always constant drain on the battery um, I must say overall I'm quite impressed with the build quality of the Fulham of Hero. Uh, it's made out of aluminium alloy, just the standard usual stuff. Um, and it is hard anodizing type 3. It is IPX8 rated to 2 meters waterproof. Uh, there's no USB ports on this, even although it does have the USB cable. That's because it is uh, the actual cell that should come with the light is a USB, has a USB port on it to be charged. Um, stainless steel clip as you can see here but it's well maybe not stainless steel uh, steel clip because it's coated um, TIR optics up the front with a uh, little nub there not sure what the nub does but you can see it there like a honeycomb style and I'm not sure if it's a stainless steel bezel but there is a nice looking bezel it doesn't it might be aluminium because the way it looks and to keep weight down but either way it's like a tactical style bezel which does allow you to see the light if it's left on by accident which is a cool feature you can also uh, tail stand the light like so yeah so overall I think the build quality is great like if I had to give it a number I would literally give it probably like oh yeah I hate, I hate saying it like that I'll literally give it I will probably give it like a 7 or 8 out of 10 it's a really well built light um, it does look pretty different, but there's nothing bad about it. Like, I've been using this now for weeks, and it still looks like it's brand, brand new. Quite a nice, cool-looking light. Something different. It fits in the hand, like, very well. Oop, that's hard to show you guys. Why does my hand look so big on the camera? Ooh. So now we're at modes and UI. So the UI is super easy. You turn it on. It does have a memory mode after the last used mode. And you just cycle up and down. And you push and hold to turn off. And it's that simple. It does have an instant turbo from off. And it's got a lockout mode. So one, two, three. And it will blink. And then I can't turn the light on. I gotta unlock it again by pushing one, two, three. And then I can turn the light back on. So it's super simple. It does have um, the strobe modes. I think you just double click. And then you can just cycle modes. I'm not sure how to cycle modes in this mode. I don't really use it. But there is a way to cycle modes there. Okay, after reading. Apparently you just cycle it by pushing and holding. Or by twice, clicking twice. There we go. I got it. See, I'm an expert. Huh? Next mode. What mode is this? I don't know what's going on here. What happened? Talk to me. I wasn't really going to take the light apart, but I just want to show you guys one or two things from inside here. So it doesn't really matter because it does come with a battery. But if we have a look down here, I'll be your doctor for the evening. Um, you can see the way that the front is set up is you need a button top cell. And the thing is, um, it's quite a big battery cavity. So a cell like this cell, which is kind of like a ripoff of the Panasonic NCRs, that does sit high, high enough. But if you have like an unprotected cell like so, one, it's not going to work because there's no nub on the front. And two, it sits so far down in the battery tube that the back spring is pretty short and it doesn't make proper contact so the thing is if you want to switch out batteries because you want to use a different one besides the one that was included you would need like a specific type like uh, a pretty high drain button top cell which I know not everyone has well everyone has except for me I would say probably the coolest part about the Fulham of Hero is this you take out the e-switch at the back and it's a nice tactical clicky e-switch and you can see that's the driver there so that appears to be a MOSFET, and that's a SOT, so another MOS MOSFET. And that appears to be the microcontroller. I did try to look up the um, number on there, even though you guys can't see it. I had to pull out my microscope to find it. But um, 
yeah, I couldn't find any part numbers. Anyway, that's enough blabbering on. Let's take the light outside and get some beam shots. Man, I was just about to escape outside and get some beam shots. And then I was like, oh, damn, I've got to do the pros and cons. So I guess we'll just do the pros and cons then. Um, first pro is it's built well. It is a well-built light. It does look cool. Uh, it is finished very well. Um, I don't think you can really fault it for its build build quality. Um, it's small and compact. It's as bright as any triple flashlight on the market. Well, they might be a little bit brighter, 2,800 lumens, but it's pretty close. Um, decent driver. You know, the driver is pretty intuitive. Uh, nice and uh, cool looking optics here, and I just woke up everyone in the house. No worries. Um, as for cons, you can't really fault it. I will say it does get hot. But you are buying a light that only weighs 55 grams, so yeah, it's to be expected. Um, my biggest qualm with this light is that it does take that sp that specific that specific type of 18650. Um, so keep that in mind if you want to swap them out. Um, and it could they could improve the UI by putting on like they could have easily just put on like a ramping mode, which would have in improved it slightly. Um, but besides that, you can't really fault it. There's nothing wrong with the light. It's a well built light so let's take it outside now all right guys now we're outside i can be a little bit louder someone's gonna stick their head over the fence now be like hey you shut up but this is like four o'clock in the morning so we've got the full off hero on its ultra low mode which is supposed to be 17 lumens but it looks a lot brighter than 17 lumens to me i've seen 17 lumens in the past and it does not light up the whole bloody backyard like so like not even only on the screen does it look like it's lit up like in real life Fair enough, it's really grainy, but yeah, I think they're a bit off on that one. We'll cycle up modes now. So what's after ultra low? Um, supposed to be low mode, 125 lumens. I wouldn't be surprised if like low mode, ultra low mode is around that because it doesn't seem there's that much difference in brightness, right? It's a little less grainy now. And considering that it's like such a floody beam, got to keep that in mind too. So then we got medium mode, which is 300 lumens. So you can see not a big increase there either. You know, you'd be thinking from like 175 lumens difference, you should be able to tell. But some of that is the human eye too. Look at that, it's pretty cold out here. It's like three degrees. <sighs> Just trying to blow some steam. Uh, next up is high mode, 700 lumens. So you can see it's getting there pretty bright now. Not overly bright, but pretty good. Pretty good, pretty good. And then we'll go turbo mode. So there we go, turbo mode. And you can see it is a very bright light and super floody. Like, look at how it's lighting up, like, the whole yard. Like, from there all the way across to there. Like, it's super floody. And it's lighting up the house down the road, too. Sorry, guys. Could be trying to sleep. Well, EDSG here is, is here to ruin your dreams. Wait, that doesn't sound too good. Cut the camera. So uh, it is starting to heat up pretty good right now. It's getting pretty hot. But considering it's such a cold night, it's actually handling the heat very well. It doesn't look like it's dimmed too much, but on the camera you can see it has dimmed. Anyway, enough blabbering on. We'll compare it to a few lights and see how it does. So right now we've got my favorite, my BLF A6 with the uh, XHP 50.3 and the A6 driver. But it's got a sliced dome, so it does throw. Actually, it throws pretty good. Can't, I can't complain, I guess. And so that's to the right here, and then to the left we've got the uh, Follow Moth Hero. So you can see if I turn off the uh, A6, that's the Hero there. The Hero is still pretty warm, so yeah. Definitely it's a cooler tint, but it's not really because the uh, XHP50 in the BLF uh, A6 is also a 6500K tint. Although uh, this one has been measured at 6000K in the Follow Moth. Because I sliced the dome and it's got an OP reflector, it does make a little bit of a difference. And this is the Strobe, this is the um, BLF A6 here. So you can see they are pretty much pretty similar outputs, I think. Uh, just the uh, Follow Moth Hero, which is this one here, is just a little bit floodier. You can see the beam, actually you can see on the back house there, you see the white strip. Uh, you can see they both throw pretty well, actually. I did rate the Fulham Off Hero at um, 6,000 CD and Fulham Off rated at 10,000. So somewhere between those two, 
should be a good number. Okay, so we've got the Fallen Moth Hero here to the uh, left, and to the right, this side, we've got the, uh, what's it called, FW3A in brass. Um, that'll probably be the biggest side-by-side -side kind of com comparison, I guess. These two flashlights will be going head-to-head, -head, um, because they're pretty much the same size, well, yeah, similar and similar weight. So that is the, uh, that is the uh, FW3A on now. It does have high CRI um, Nishias in it, so yeah, it's not going to be, hmm, it's probably similarly brightness in brightness, similarly brightness. I'm making new words. It's probably just as bright, but yeah. It is actually stepping down as you can see. It, the camera is starting to get a lot dimmer. So even this brass FW3A can't even handle this much heat. And this thing weighs like over three times as much as the um, as the Fallen Moth Hero. So I'm just going to instant turbo from off in the Fallen Moth Hero. And that's how quick it is, the instant turbo, just like that. So I'm going to hold it till my fingers burn off. So, uh... Yeah, I think the Fallen Moth Hero is a great light. Uh, Fallen Moth isn't a brand that I know too much about personally. But, um, yeah, it's a really well-built light. It's got pretty good features. I'm not sure about the price. I've been trying to find one for sale. All I could find was Battery Junction for 50 bucks, which is... Eh, it's, it's okay, 50 bucks US, but, uh, yeah. If you can find one from China, you can probably get it for about 30 or 40. I think it'd be a great buy. Uh, well-built. So, yeah, I think I would definitely check it out if you're after a small, tiny 18650 flashlight with a lot of output. Uh, as always, uh, like and subscribe, and thanks for watching, guys.